I guess if you're going to make a leap, uh, whether it's the right thing to do or not, you're going to have to have hope as well yeah. as believe. What, what's your What's your views on um, like how we can teach people or cultivate hope within people? Or have you ever thought about that before? Because it exists in poker as well as life, right? Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's a relevant part, hope or um, optimism or like confidence or whatever like that that thing would be called. Um, I see it kind of as you want to like you're the thing in the middle that is trying to compute and you want to increase your ability to think through a situation and you want to have some pull factors that believe in the better future that would be like hope or confidence etc to reach some good things and then you also want to have some push factors like the fear or like what are the bad scenarios you want to avoid and i think we need all three parts to kind of like come to the best outcomes and therefore definitely like there you you need something to strive towards it's not enough if you're just like running away from negative scenarios um yeah liv will also be talking more about in the future maybe in her videos about um positive futures that we can try to achieve yeah, because for me, when you look at uh, poker training, it's, you know, I mean, I haven't looked at poker training for a long time, so it's unfair for me to comment on it. But back in the day, it used to be very technical. Mm -hmm. But I would think like teaching things like hope and other kind of like more psychological skills would be really important in poker. I mean, how did you, what was your training like when you grew up? Was it like top heavy on a technical or more on mindset? How did it, you balance that? Um, probably in its effect it ended up being mostly just playing and then looking through play. So by that, I guess the play was always hopeful by, <laughs> by itself. Um, overall, I, I do want to be rather a bit careful, like the thing from the three that I want to be most careful with is the hope. Because if it, if it ends up being like blind optimism, that seems to be very dangerous, um, where you can run down a path that just is going to lead to negative outcomes too frequently. Whereas the other part, if you just avoid all very harshly negative outcomes, that seems to be at least never super, super bad. Um, similarly to if your like internal like ability to estimate and predict the future is good, then also you're not going to run into super, super bad outcomes. But pure hope can run into super, super bad outcomes and we want to avoid those. So. Um, Kind of like rational optimism, something like that. I think it seems to make sense to me. Yeah. When you talk about um, blind hope and having too much optimism, uh, the thing that pops up into my mind is friends. Like, mm -hmm. who, who are the people who are going to keep us on a straight and narrow? Because it's really difficult, isn't it, for someone to turn around and say to you, "Hey, look, Igor, I, I know you really love this thing, but it's, I, I'm here to tell you that it ain't, it ain't working." Have you been blessed with friends like that? Uh, I think. Yeah, definitely. I, I have been very lucky that the people around me were happened to be such that were like actively giving feedback and seeking feedback and this kind of the dynamic that we created. And it seems to be very important because you would, it's very hard. Like it's also, I think it's on the individual as well to try to create a platform which allows for people to give negative feedback because otherwise, like for example, someone writes for the first time, they write a blog article and like a friend just has this like, the social pressure on them internally, it seems as well, to just say, well done, nice, you should follow that path, I guess. And it's hard to say the negative thing. And you have to make it easy for people to say the negative thing, mm. I think. 